just 20 days away from the start of spring training and two weeks away from the start of college baseball season. Lots to talk about between now and then. But today we are taking time out from all that discussion to answer your questions in a mailbag episode of Lockdown Guardians. You are Locked On Guardians, your daily podcast on the Cleveland Guardians, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. I'm going to let you in on some behind the scenes. So we're doing back to back recordings. This cat, who you heard on Wednesday's episode, the minute we stopped recording, went laid over there and did nothing. And the minute we were getting ready to record, right back at it. Uh, Really wants to take this co-hosting job from you, Justin. The the cats are here, but I won't let them. Uh, Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join today and you get $200 in bonus bets. If your first bet of $5 or more wins, visit FanDuel.com slash Locked. I'm sorry. fanduelcom slash locked on to get started today. Uh, we have mailbag. So it's just who uh, we also had two more. I, I, I made Justin talk about the fact that I wanted to very quickly talk about Dom Nunez, who I kind of liked as a prospect coming up. Another Elk Grove guy. Cleveland has taken a few players from that high school over the years. Uh, they love their California mm-hmm. kids. Uh, you know, he was good enough to get up to the majors. Solid defender. I thought he hit a little bit more. Um, didn't hit enough. He's going to be your triple A catcher, but Hey, you know, he's got some experience in the big leaves. Gives you some depth there. Anthony Banda is a guy who was a former top 100 pitcher, a lefty and was part of the, the centerpiece of the Steven Souza junior deal just has not, uh, doesn't miss bats and has always had some control issues and uh, gives them some depth. And now the cat's just stealing my earbuds in the middle of the show here, but uh, gives them another depth option. And it's nice to see them bringing in some guys who give them some different looks and depth. And I don't know if you're going to find more uh, from a guy who spent years in Tampa and they didn't break the code on him, but Hey, you know, it's uh, it was an interesting name. I was like, Oh, Banda. That's an interesting guy to add uh, to camp. It should start the year in triple A and give him more depth. He is a name. So that's true. He does have a, name. he has a name. Yes, he has a name. That's important. And he throws left-handed, and he uh, will throw the baseball in spring training and will soak up some innings, and maybe Cleveland will see if they can strike lightning in a bottle. Who knows? There's another Anthony left-hander. We keep forgetting that. Keep forgetting where the Anthony goes. I forgot to mention him the other day. I, when I did my interview with Will Dion over at uh, Guardians of the Future, if you didn't listen to that podcast, please go do so, because uh, Will Dion let me in on some interesting insights into his 2023 season and what's coming for 2024. And he mentioned hanging out with Anthony goes when there's, we discovered there's a nine year age gap between him and Anthony goes and just a very odd friendship, but it seems like a lot of guardians, minor leaguers like Anthony goes, he is a well-liked player in that system, even though he's, you know, in his mid thirties, it's old like us, like us, but the 25 year olds in this, in the system seem to like him, but we could talk about that in spring training. But for today, we've got some questions regarding spring training on our mailbag episode of Lockdown Guardians. Our first question comes from Guards253 on Twitter. Name one player each. So he wants us both to answer this, Jeff, not just one of us, who could conceivably make the open day roster because of good spring training performance. And I picked this question because performance in spring training is very hard to evaluate, especially A, for pitchers, because, well, both really, because the ball flies in Arizona. Pitchers are working on things. You got pitchers who are out there throwing, you know, every third pitch is a change up and they're, they're just throwing their fastball. They're working on fastball command and they're working on building up their, their arm strength. So it's very hard to judge guys based on spring training performance. We can't do it. And I don't think the, the major league teams do it either if they're smart, but that doesn't mean they can't have a good spring training and make the opening day roster. I'm going to take the easy way out on this question, and I'm going to say that it's a guy from from Monday's show that we talked about because I'm kind of stealing your your theory here that Tyler Beatty has an opt out and he want, was wanted by other other teams. He gives you some depth, whether he's a bullpen arm, swingman, whatever you want to do, former top prospect. Um, I, I still don't know how they make room for him on the forty, but 
what you said the other day to me makes a lot of sense is he has the opt out. Other teams are interested. He added a sweeper. He's always had a good change up. He throws hard. Maybe Cleveland can work with him on changing the fastball shape because he really does need that. Um, there's some intrigue there, but you know, he gives you some early season depth, which you're going to need for pitchers as they build up, especially when you're talking about Bieber and McKenzie injuries and the three rookies who are, you're going to be careful with innings wise. So BD makes a lot of sense. Uh, I do want to give a shout out to every day or cheeks Malone who, uh, did rightfully point out when I talked about BD and his wife that the the ultimate example of that is Carson Tucker and his wife Vanessa Hutchins. Cole Tucker, Cole Tucker, wrong Tucker, Cole Tucker, Cole Tucker. Sorry, sorry, wrong Tucker. Um, with Tucker. all of my crazy, crazy Christmas stuff, I don't know how I miss out on, on that. Uh, uh, it's, I, you know, I have my mailbox back here. I can reach in and get the mail out for us um, during the show. But uh, you know, it it comes down to hitters for me. I I think. There's a world, you know, Manzardo to me is the lazy guess if they don't bring anyone in. But I think Jonathan Rodriguez can make a case because they have no one who's right-handed, right? And if this front office at points with Tito, they leaned into platoons and things like that. And, you know, he's replaced Oscar Gonzalez as that right-handed potential. So I think there is a world where he is like your fourth outfielder because he's the only one, or maybe your fifth outfielder, I should say, who is going to help with some of those platooning aspects if you decide to go kind of deeper into that, if you decide to have a few players that you split up and, and find a successful role um, pitching wise, if I'm going to go really crazy, Andrew Walters, let's get, let's get nuts. Right. Uh, he's not Andrew on the 40 Walters man. Has a great month in. Okay. Wow. If, if he comes out and his stuff is, you know, the filthiest and he is the guy or like, Oh, so he's our number two reliever with, listen, I always said his fastball. He's not even a big great camp. pitch. Like I said, I'm getting crazy. At least, at least Franco Aleman is in big league camp. Like, my goodness. okay. At least Walters has pitched on back to back days one time well, in his career. Um, yeah, that's fair. No, I mean, I if if we're it's close, but if we're ranking the two of them, I'm putting Walters slightly ahead of Aleman. But and, and there's still, know, I, there I didn't still know this slider was going to be this like pitch people were saying was a 60 or 70 grade pitch. You know, he went from a one pitch guy to me, more or less this guy that I don't know. I, I you know, he's probably no chance he makes it out of camp, but I'm just saying he's someone to watch. He's, I, I don't, I think we see him this year. He, yeah. He, he could beat Alamon to the majors and that's saying something because Alamon obviously had a good year last year, but like you said, Alamon, you know, the back-to-back days are an issue and he potentially has two 60, 60 grade pitches as well. If things hit right. The, the, the pitching's easy, I guess, because you need depth early in the season. The Manzardo thing we're going to talk about a little bit, but his situation's just weird. We talked about that Monday based on the top 100 prospect situation, which is really frustrating to describe because it's just not done properly and it it doesn't really help players with it, that they said it was going to. All right. Speaking of infielders on the roster, we'll get to Manzardo in a little bit. But this one, we had a lot of questions about Davis and De Los Santos, who I think you have to say he – needs a good perform. I don't know if he needs a good performance to make the open day roster because full five is weird, but James Vogel wants to know what the most likely Davis and De Los Santos scenario is on the big league roster, return to Arizona or a trade worked out to allow the guardians to keep him and send the triple a. I think how far fetched is it to think that the Manzardo top hundred prospect situation and Davis and De Los Santos making the team out of spring training are connected. Because think about it this way. Let's say Kylie McDaniel doesn't rank Kyle Manzaro in the top 100. That means Kylie McDaniel sending Kyle Manzaro back to AAA to start the year because there's no reason for Cleveland to call him up in, in April. Um, but if he is, you know, maybe Manzaro's on the open day roster. Maybe Davis and De Los Santos doesn't make the roster because of that. So if, if Manzaro starts the year in AAA, I think De Los Santos starts the year in the big leagues. I don't see Arizona allowing Cleveland to make a trade unless they're just blown away because what what reason would Arizona have to give up the rights? They have the leverage here. Um, so unless you're really just overpaying to make it happen. But uh, I, I think Manzaro's situation and De Los Santos' situation are connected in spring training. But I think I think it's – I think De Los Santos could make the only day roster. I, I don't know how long, but he could make it. Uh, I'm just going to throw a quick apology here. I'm hearing my son cry. My wife is helping him, who is two. I, I, 
he's he's two stories away, so it shouldn't be. But if it's if anyone's really listening on some high fidelity, I'm just going to throw that apology now. Uh, it's it's ten o'clock my time. It, it's super late for a two year old to have woke up in the middle of the night. He, he's he's had some health issues, so I'm going to apologize for that. Now, yeah, I don't think Arizona trades him because you don't want to take that risk, right? Because you're not going to get that much to take off the protection. And there is like some high ceiling potential. You you don't want this to be a situation where, hey, we got Eli Morgan and traded an all-star first baseman. I'm not saying he is an all-star first baseman. I'm not saying that's even likely, but there is an outcome where that happens. Like just because the power potential is what it is and with his adjustments. And I was thinking the same thing. That's why I couldn't help but laugh where... Is it a bigger effect on him? Uh, the man, like, is is Manzardo's situation affect him more than anything else? Like, does he get a shot? And that's the thing. It, you don't have to keep him, but I think right now, give it a try. I, I think he might be the starting first baseman for a month and a month and a half, and then if it does not work, hey, Kyle, it's your spot, and uh, we've guaranteed. Because it's hard for first baseman to win rookie of the year. It's hard for a small market guy to finish top. You know, we talked about Tanner had a all time year. He didn't get enough appreciation anywhere, but he had one of the best seasons ever by a Cleveland Guardians rookie pitcher. And he still finished second. Look what Tristan Cassis in Boston did. He had a fantastic year and couldn't be top two. So I think that uh, I I think he might end up being the first baseman because I I don't know how how confident, how much the risk is worth with Josh. Yeah. Yeah. I think at least platoons with, with Josh Naylor. And then Bill wanted to know what the what the ripple effects of De Los Santos making the open day roster are. And that's essentially the answer right there, Bill. So there you go. So we've talked about two spring training invites. We've talked about guys who can make the open day roster with a good spring training performance. Maybe De Los Santos is one of them. We've talked about Mansardo and De Los Santos. We've got to talk about extension candidates. And then uh, if the Guardians prospect evaluation uh, process if it's if it's uh not been great we're going to talk about that as well in the rest of our mailbag episode here on lockdown guardians before we get to the rest of our questions on today's mailbag let's answer a good question who are you taking in the super bowl uh still another week away but happy super bowl to those who celebrate from fan america's number one sports book again i'm all about the snacks not really a surprise. Right? I'm taking it's black not, licorice. Nope, That's what I'm taking. Nope. I'm Jeff, just going to sit here and eat black muted. licorice on the show next week. I'm just going to. I think I can mute you. Look at that. I learned how to mute Jeff. That's what we did. No, no black licorice from Jeff today. Give me the wings. Give me, give me some fried stuff. Why not? Um, that's what I like about the Super Bowl. I used to love watching with my dad, but now I watch for the commercials and the snacks. Um, you can get a W yourself on Super Bowl Sunday. So many ways to get a W or two or three. Uh, bet on who's going to win the Super Bowl, but FanDuel also has bets for who's going to score a touchdown. Travis Kelsey, I'm I'm taking that bet. I'm taking a bet on uh, how many catches he's going to have as well, because I think the Chiefs are going to go to him quite a bit. How many points are going to be scored? And a lot more prop bets. New customers, great deal for you in the Super Bowl. Join before the Super Bowl, and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if you win your first bet of $5 or more. Just visit FanDuel.com slash LockDown to sign up. FanDuel.com slash lockdown. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. All right, well, we'll unmute Jeff now since we don't talk about snacks anymore. I should have asked that well, question. What's your, I, you know, just, just for the sake of our podcast, um, catching SEOs, uh, we should say with the FanDuel, do they have a betting for Taylor Swift and how often she'll appear on screen? And now that I've mentioned Taylor Swift, we'll get like 100 extra views. That's how Boom. Right. She She's, got a that's, thousand that's views that's, on this video There's alone. the extension. Uh, that's that's who they should offer an extension to, is to have her just like how much to have her come to games because of all the attention you'll get. Um, I mean, Travis Kelsey's from Cleveland. You bring him to yeah. Cleveland to throw out a first pitch. She comes with him. Boom. You just saw out the stadium. Marketing yeah, one and then if she's there all the time, we can that. sign everyone. We can do Look all of these that. extensions. See, the Guardians will spend is... money if they can get Taylor Swift to come to games with Travis Kelsey, and people will come to see the celebrities in attendance. I mean, tra- what else is Travis going to do this summer? Go on tour with Taylor, and when, when he's not, come home and, and go to some baseball games. Enjoy enjoy some Guardians baseball. Um, speaking of extension candidates, yeah, who can the Guardians extend in the spring with all the money that uh, Travis Kelsey – they should get Travis Kelsey to invest 
and there you go. Travis Kelsey and, and Taylor Swift, they come together to uh, invest minority in ownership with, uh, with David Blitzer. They need one. Um, so with all that money, who can the Guardians extend? Chuck wants to know this spring. I don't know. Are you exploring Tanner. a Kyle Manzardo extension already? I mean, I, I think that Colt Keith one is shows how cheap it can be. Like, because he's not going to get that much. He's older. It's the first. He is not as well thought of of a prospect, and that's not to ding him. But I'm saying, like, if he's doing six years, thirty four. I mean, can you get? Uh, you know, it, maybe like uh, that's going to be a deal that Detroit, unless the person completely implodes, Detroit's going to do well on that. Jeff. The last we've talked about this for a space and the sign extensions. How's how's the last one doing? Evan White is how's fantastic. White John Singleton's been so good. <laughs> it really works out good. I love I don't know. Boys in the Hood. Here, let me throw this one out to you because this is also risky for both sides, too. What about Bo Naylor? Is Bo are you ready to give Bo Naylor an extension yet? Because Based on what yes. he did last year, there's still there's still concerns if he can hit lefties or not. But you know, it took Josh a few years. Maybe maybe that willow won't stick for Josh. I don't know. But it's a catcher. He may not be the world's best defensive catcher. He might be good enough. I'm I'm really buying in on Bo Naylor offensively based on last year. I will say, defensively, I think he'll get to be average. He's got enough athleticism, and he wants to work hard enough um, to get there. But catchers are risky, man. Like. He could get hurt. Catchers get hurt. Any, anybody could get hurt. So that's like, you know, any, anybody could get hurt. But he is a good athlete. And, you know, he's only 24. So he has a chance to reach, you know, free agency before 30 if he doesn't sign a contract. Do you want to buy out a few years of Bo Naylor's free agency and lock him up? Yes. Catchers are really are the hardest thing to find in this sport. So if I can get one and lock him up, I'm all for it, especially with the way his bat played. Boo to Jim Bowden, who did not include him on the list of most exciting catchers. That he's in exciting young catchers. He had four catchers. He none make- of them were Bo Naylor. It's a bad list. It's because he couldn't make money off of uh, Bo Naylor's signing bonus like he did. Oh, I'm sorry. Was that was that too low of a blow for, for our buddy Ralph? No. Well, well earned. Um, saw many jokes yeah, about I that mean- with the recent issues that are coming up. Yeah, Chuck, but Chuck's question was, who is realistic? Is, is Bo Naylor even realistic? Manzardo seems realistic, but there's a lot of, there's more risk there for Cleveland than there is I feel Manzardo. Like Tanner so really is, sure is, is the realistic one to me because he's a little bit older. He didn't get the big bonus. Um, sure. You know, he's, but he's got some leverage. He does. He's he certainly leverage. does. I mean, you're going to have to pay to get him. I mean, it's, yeah. You know, these are good young players, and they have not. Does anybody sign an extension this spring? Just yeah, not not who, but and does anybody? Yes or no? Does Cleveland have an extension to announce this spring? I feel like the answer is no. I feel like everything's kind of in a holding pattern, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with you right now. Uh, Richard wanted to know which twenty six players in the ground the open day roster when Manzardo gets called up. So Richard already thinks that Manzardo's starting in Triple A. If Manzardo doesn't make the opening day roster, I don't know. Do you? I'm not really worried about him as a super two guy because, again, we're not talking about like a Lindor or a, an Adley Rutschman or a Jackson Holiday. Like, you know, Manzardo's a good prospect and he's going to be good for this team, I feel like, but he's also not a guy I'm really afraid to super two. So are you really, if he doesn't start in the opening day roster, do you just wait till June or are you going to call him up sooner if, if, if it makes sense to. Uh, in first baseman, don't get expensive either. Um, Not much so, like or something. Yeah. And even Nick he Kurtz wasn't is gonna that be really expensive. Just FYI. Um, yeah, he'll be really expensive when Oakland drafts him. Um, I'm meeting you again. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I don't know. I, 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 I do. More and more, I think Manzaro isn't going to be on the roster. I think they'll see what Ev- Edison can do. And remember, adding Manzardo means you got to have a 40, you got to take someone away. So either you got to figure out 
some, you know, doing the, the, just what happened with old friend Samad Taylor, where you're getting like a small amount of cash by trading away a Jose Tana type. Who's like, I mean, he's probably number 40 on the roster right now. Um, I know people are like every year it's bad. It's like, yes, every year has been bad, but we've never been to the point where it's like Tina. And then, I mean, it, they really need to. After Tina, it's pretty rough. Out. Yeah. 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 Real Fausto also wanted to ask about, um, will the Guardians keep Manzard or AAA and start the season to give Roki and Arias regular playing time at shortstop and DH? I think, I don't know, the, the more we talk about this, the more questions that come in. I mean, number one, for 100%, if if Manzardo's not on Carly McDaniel's top 100, I think he starts in AAA. But even if he does, like, I, I don't even know. I'm kind of talking myself into saying that no matter what happens with Kyle McDaniel's list, that Manzaro starts in AAA. I just think that's yeah. the odds are better that he does go to AAA to start the year. And if he does, yeah, I think you rotate DH. You have De Los Santos. I don't. I don't think it's about Arias and Rocchio if Manzaro's a AAA. I think it's about De Los Santos and trying to DH him because here's here's the thing with De Los Santos. We're getting back into is, you know, it's not just that he hasn't played above double a before, right. Which makes it really hard for him. It's that to continue developing as a player and a prospect, he has to get reps and it's a fine line between exposing a 21 year old or a 20 year old to major league pitching for the first time. um, Who's never played above double a and, you know, who had some suspect numbers at at double a, to be honest with you. Yes. And, and trying to hide him, but also trying to make sure he's getting enough playing time to continue developing because it's one thing for Cleveland to sit him on the bench all year and say, guess what? We kept on the roster all year. So go to AAA at age 21 and, and work on it. But you essentially deprived him of a year of development by hiding on the bench. How much does that hurt him as well? So if Manzaro does start in AAA, like we talked about before, I think De Los Santos is sort of the benefactor of that is you have a chance to get us in the bats and, you know, hope for the best. Yeah, no, agree. Uh, should we take a quick break and then come back and do some more questions? Yeah, we've got prospect evaluation questions, winter ball questions, uh, rule five eligibles for 2024, a little fun to talk about, all kinds of fun questions we still have to get to uh, on today's mailbag episode. All right, let's start with a tougher question to answer. Save us for the last segment because um, it might take some some hard answering. I'm paraphrasing this question from Sam. From Samuel, uh, sorry, let me go and find his whole name on Twitter. Is it, here. Samuel. Is it Watkins? He's Watkins, yes. Yeah. Every day. Uh, this is a very long message he sent me. I'm trying to paraphrase it, but he wonders if he's too critical of the Guardians front office because, we've, and you've talked about this multiple times, Jeff, about you know, the log jam at the infield spot with Arias, with Rocchio, with Freeman, and now with Jimenez and Brito, who we think, you know, Jimenez is the solution. The rest of those guys are unknown. Um, just the fact there's a buildup there and Cleveland has no answers and you don't know what you're, how you're going to make time for all these guys and you don't know what you can get out of them, either on your own team or through a trade. And he also is questioning whether or not they made the right calls on Brennan, Benson, Gonzalez, Rodriguez, Jones, Valera. And if the same thing is going to happen in the infield. So basically he's wondering, is it, is it, is it fair to be critical of the guardians prospect evaluation process because of this log jam, they have nothing to bear fruit from at this point, other than a lot of questions and unrealized potential until now. I mean, I think it's fair to question there it, and it's the approach, right? It's like we talked, I've talked about this before. They go for kind of really safe types and then, you know, it's like nobody wants to trade for safety, e- even them, right? When they traded for Clevenger, the centerpiece is Gabby Arias, who is a plus power swing. Uh, they win against type like it, centerpieces are guys with big ceiling and it makes it hard for them to swing trades. And if none of these guys I and mean, one could argue Rokio's best trade value was two to three years ago, they could have gotten something. You know, it's like all of these guys are like cars coming off the lot because as they move up to the minors, there's less excitement because the ceiling is lower. And until these players start hitting and producing and they actually, you know, can have a bit of a hitting pipeline, it, it's fair to question the approach because the approach has been unsuccessful. I mean, you got a Jose and you got Quan, everyone else is external. I mean, it, it, Bo, if he sticks, but it's even Josh was external. Andres was external. 
straw is external now he hasn't been good but still he's had the majority of the bets they've had to go external and part of that is also you know ha- having been really good and trading away prospects and drafting later but you know the the best outfit of the last 20 years is still luke scott in terms of war of anyone they've drafted and number two is ryan church and there's an issue there i think your your car cars in a lot analogy makes a lot of sense because like you said when you bring in new inventory you've got to move the old inventory off and then your four you know cars are salesman or you know maybe not in this not in this market trust me i just bought a car last year so maybe it's not the same but um you know those cars at least lose value in terms of what they're going to sell for if they're just sitting there um yeah you, you you get a lot of prospect fatigue too when when players have not gotten there i mean look at you know rokio a lot of this goes back to the guy i'm not going to mention in shortstop too they waited too long on moving on from him to get answers from the rest of these guys And I think the other half of this too is we're going to go back to the Sean Murphy trade, everyone's favorite subject, right? They didn't have anything in the deal Oakland wanted. Oakland clearly valued uh, who's the center fielder that's not really a zero power. Uh, Estuary Ruiz. Right. Cleveland didn't have whatever Oakland wanted in that trade. Like, yes, I'm sure Oakland would have been like, yeah, we'll take Tanner Bybee or we'll take Gavin Williams, whatever. Of course, Cleveland wasn't going to do that, but they didn't have other other pieces in the farm system to make that kind of trade. The Oakland didn't want the Rokios. They didn't want a package around Gabriel Arias. They didn't want um, they fa- I shouldn't say they didn't want it. They just favored Ruiz. If they maybe they would have taken that deal if they couldn't get Ruiz and whatever else they got. But obviously, Cleveland wasn't going to trade their pitching and the Rokios, the Ariases, the Freemans, whatever Valeras wasn't enough to to outweigh the package that they got in the Ruiz and all that deal. So it's, it's not only the process itself of not finding a spot for these guys to play or, or evaluating wrong and taking the wrong swings on safe upside and, or safe, safe floors and no upside. You also don't have pro- prospects. That other teams want to trade for either. That's the issue is you, you can't make other teams take your prospects. Like, it's great to sit there and pile up and say, well, we've got Rokia, we've got Arias and we've got Freeman and we've got Martinez and yeah, they all can't play. (laughs) Yeah. Just show up with a, some blackmail or a mask and a a lightsaber. That's what Alex Anthopoulos does, right? That's, that's the thing. Can't keep getting away with this. He's he's got Um, pictures of everybody. (laughs) He does. But yeah, like you just, it's great to pile those up and say, well, if, one of them will work out at shortstop and whoever doesn't work out will trade. And they haven't been able to do that. And is that, that part of that might be that other teams just don't value that. And everybody else is doing the same thing. Everybody else is signing. Um, look, look at the most recent international signing class. Like you're either an outfielder or you're a second baseman or a shortstop. Like nobody is signing an international, like a Dominican first baseman right now. The, the guy like so they're already a who, first baseman. It's bad. <laughs> right? It's bad. Who who's the guy? Junior San San Quentin, who's in the Guardians minors, yeah. signed as a shortstop. Yeah. And now he's a first baseman who is a giant human being. It's like everybody is signing a shortstop by the Dominican in the international draft. So everybody has these guys. You don't have a differentiated prospect if you don't trade your pitching. So that's that's part of the process here too. So that's why I said this is a long question to answer. That's why I chose it here. But it was a good one. So thank you to uh, Samuel Watkins for that question. A fellow Avon Laker, I will say over here. Yeah, good not dude, a short, every day. not a shortman. I didn't go to Avon like high school, so I'm not a shortman, but I am a, an Avon Laker. A couple of quick ones we can get on before we get out of here, Jeff. Old, oldie but a good one. David W wants to know how winter ball works. The players get paid. Does Cleveland have to sign off on players participating? So. Uh, most times the winter league teams own the rights to players. They draft them, they trade for them, whatever. Uh, players do get paid. Yes, Cleveland does have to sign off on players participating. That's why Jose Ramirez got to play for three weeks. Some guys get to play for longer. And our last one before we get out of here from Billy Fish. Um, this, I could have spent more time on this, but three to five, 2025, rule five eligible candidates. You got our guy, Will Dion, my guy, Ross, uh, Ross Carver. There's is that Jake Miller on the list? Is Jake Miller already a rule Jake five? Jake Miller wouldn't be year? eligible. Is that somebody else? And then Steven Hajar. <laughs> I wish Steven Hajar was worth putting on the 40, but man, he has a hard time. No, Jake Miller is a 2024, by the way, Jeff. 
Is he? He was a 2020 December draft. 2024. Or he's a, isn't he? I thought, no, he's a, wasn't he the 2021 draft? Is that already to the point where yes, he was the 20th round pick in 2020. 2021. 2021. 21, yeah. So, so he is eligible this or? coming winter. Yeah. Um, I think I we'll see how Carver does this year. I really like Ross Carver. He's my kind of my sleeper this year. I think, well, Dion, if he pitches well in AAA, it's going to be hard not to 40 man him because. You know, he went to, he he worked out with driveline. I know Jeff the other day said we put too much into the driveline stuff, but you know, he worked out with driveline. And if you just took out his name and his fast, if what you know about his fastball velocity, if you looked at his numbers, um, so I think we're missing maybe. I, I agree. Dion is the one. I, I think we're missing a pretty big name on this list, and that's uh, that is of course Aaron Davenport. I'm kidding. It's uh, Ryan Webb. Oh yes, Ryan Webb. Ryan if he has Webb. a big year. He's a hard one um, you can't protect. You know, I, I don't have much faith in the KZ really and Mace. Class. Uh, yeah. Hey, Jack you know, Luffwich. Carson Tucker. Ooh, that's twice. You mentioned P- Carson Tucker twice on here. That's the P- most. Pete Halpin. Uh, hey, Leon he's going Tolentino. to major league spring training. Just saying. Yeah, yeah it's not it's uh, not a great class. It's a lot of pitchers. I mean, and Trenton Den, like I've talked about Denholm, maybe a guy who could excel in the pen. Sharp might be a yeah. is probably a top five reliever. And so there's there's some names, but that's the thing. Like, I mean, I spent it's two years pitching. telling you Nick uh Mika Logic was the top reliever in the system and was a no doubt guy, and then ended up he got hurt. You can't injury. predict injuries. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but he was even ineffective the year before his injury, and they didn't add him. So it's it's one of those things we'll have to wait and see. A lot of it's going to be based on how things go this year. What has gone great is all of you out there. Hey, uh, just throw it out there again. One of our most recent iTunes reviews was not the nicest. So if anyone's willing to go and shoot one out there, I'd prefer if our most recent one is is kind. Uh, but we thank you all for listening, joining us every day, rating and reviewing, downloading, all of that stuff helps. Thank you for being an everydayer like Sam Watkins we talked about, and uh, or Samuel, sorry if, if you don't go by Sam, and go, go, Guardian.